A young boy named Timmy has been sick lately. His throat's been sore and he's almost lost his voice. Timmy's mom took him to their family doctor where he was diagnosed with bronchitis. The doctor prescribed Timmy an antibiotic from the carbapenem class, told him to go home, get some rest, and he should feel okay in a couple of days. Little does Timmy know, he's inadvertently helped in making a little girl named Sarah very sick. Sarah's been suffering from a urinary tract infection, or a UTI, and pneumonia for a little while. Sarah's parents rushed her to the emergency room when her skin started turning blue from cyanosis. The ER physician diagnosed Sarah with carbapenem-resistant Enterobacteria cacti, better known as CRE. The doctor also informed Sarah and her family that she's gone septic, meaning the infection has entered her bloodstream. Sarah's likely to die in the upcoming days. You might be asking yourself, how did Timmy make Sarah sick? All he had was bronchitis. The answer has to do with the increased use and misuse of antibiotics. As the world's population ups its use of antibiotics, we've also upped the amount of antibiotic resistant viruses. The world as a whole has to take responsibility for this and take action in order to stop this growing threat. The best way to do that is to stay informed. Together we can keep the world's population from a life without these life-saving drugs. Antibiotics have grown to become an important part of medicine, but our reliance on them is having fatal consequences to the entire population. The increased use of antibiotics can and has had these deadly consequences specifically revolving around virus resistance. According to the CDE, CDDEP, the global consumption of antibiotics has increased by 36% from 2000 to 2010. And the CDC says that at least one third of the antibiotics we use in America are unnecessary. As antibiotics are used more and more, specific viruses are mutating in order to survive. These germs evolve and become resistant to the specific class of antibiotics that are used to combat them. Over time, these evolutions cause, or over time, these evolutions cause all of the drugs in the germs competitive class to become useless, making these viruses almost incurable, more likely to leave lasting damage, and potentially fatal. A perfect example of this is the gonorrhea virus. As displayed in these charts, as the cases of gonorrhea increase, causing the need of antibiotics to cure it, so has the resistance to the drugs normally caused to treat them. Avoiding this resistance doesn't mean we need to stop taking antibiotics, but it does mean that we need to become active in our healthcare. The best way to prevent antibiotic resistance is to know when and how to take antibiotics. According to the Mayo Clinic, illnesses such as colds, flu, bronchitis, coughs, and sore throat don't need antibiotics to be treated. For these type of illnesses, it's best to look for over-the-counter medications such as anti-inflammatories and cough syrups. Pairing these medications with rest and plenty of fluids is the best way to fight off the viral infections that I listed. It's very important if you are diagnosed with a bacterial infection and prescribed antibiotics, that you take your antibiotics as they are prescribed. That means you don't skip doses, you don't save your antibiotics for later illnesses, and by no means do you stop your treatment early unless your physician tells you to. These actions only act as a catalyst to the antimicrobial resistance we face today. This leads to the ineffectiveness of antibiotics and causes these resistant viruses. A world without effective antibiotics is much closer to becoming a reality than most would like to say. If antibiotics become too resistant, we could face a world where these drugs are obsolete. According to the NCIB, this is possible within the upcoming decades meaning that our grandchildren's grandchildren could potentially die of something as simple as strep throat. This would mean those simple illnesses such as UTIs and the more complex ones like gangrene would no longer be treatable. Deaths around the world would be likely to skyrocket and death by viral and bacterial infection could quickly top and become the most deadliest illness over heart disease and cancer. But it doesn't have to be that way. That's why I need everyone to take action. Take part in your healthcare and ask for alternatives when you're ill. Find out when you do and don't need antibiotics and when these over-the-counter medications are possible. Take preventative actions and make sure that you don't get these infections later in life.
Antibiotics have grown to become an important part of medic medicine, but our reliance on them is having fatal consequences on our entire population. Their growing resistance to antibiotics can be related back to their misuse and knowing when and how to take them is our best line of defense. If these trends continue, we could easily find ourselves in a world without these life-saving drugs. That's why I'm asking everybody to take charge. Know when you need your antibiotics and when other options are possible. Looking back at the story of Timmy and Sarah, I hope you can all see now how Timmy made Sarah sick. See, Timmy didn't need his antibiotics to treat his bronchitis. And because of this, Sarah no longer has an antibiotic to treat her CRE infection. So please, the next time you find yourself in Timmy's situation, look for alternatives so less people end up like Sarah with a 50-50 chance of surviving.